Unit 4. Patients with schizophrenia. In this chapter, we focus on the changes that most physiotherapists working with people suffering from schizophrenia are confronted with. It is important that all physiotherapists are trained in recognizing and adequately addressing symptoms of schizophrenia, physical comorbidities, and side effects of antipsychotic medication. Policy makers should therefore offer means to physiotherapists to acquire the necessary cognitive, behavioral, and motivational skills to assist physiotherapists in delivering high quality physiotherapy. It is unequivocal that the role of physiotherapists in the multidisciplinary treatment should be further promoted. Schizophrenia spectrum disorders, including schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, and schizophrenic neuroform disorder, are some of the most burdensome and costly, and costly illnesses. According to the Global Burden of Disease Study, schizophrenia spectrum disorders cause a high degree of disability, which accounts for 0.6% of the total disability adjusted life years worldwide. The lifetime prevalence and incidence range from 0.30% to 0.66% and from 10.2 uh, to 22.0 per 100,000 people years respectively. According to the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders criteria, schizophrenia compromises both positive and negative symptomatology severe enough to cause important social and occupational dysfunctions. Positive symptoms reflect an excess or distortion of normal functions and manifest itself in symptoms such as such as delusions, hallucinations, um, disorganized speech and behavior. Negative symptoms reflect a reduction or loss of normal functions consisting of symptoms such as affective flattening, apathy, abolition, and social withdrawal. Mesolimbic dopaminergic hyperactivity is believed to be part of the underlying pathology associated with positive symptoms, while the pathophysiology of negative symptoms is poorly understood. Negative symptoms, therefore, remain a relatively treatment refractory and de debilitating component, component of schizophrenia. Once, once the diagnosis is made, antipsychotic drugs and blocked dopamine receptors are the main treatment of schizophrenia. Many patients continue to suffer from persistent symptoms and relapses, relapses particularly when they discontinue the prescribed medication. The primary cause of this premature mortality is the increased prevalence of physical comorbidities. Of particular concern are metabolic and cardiovascular disease, and patients with schizophrenia are also four times more likely to be overweight, have a twofold increased risk for diabetes, and show a two to three times higher prevalence of dyslipidemia compared with the general population. In addition, people with schizophrenia are more likely to receive suboptimal medical care and health care provision to address these potentially fatal physical comorbidities. They are also hampered by difficulty in changing their lifestyle that can have a beneficial influence on many of the physical comorbidities seen. Much of this difficulty stems from factors related to their illness, negative symptoms, low self-esteem, and its treatment, extrapyramidal and metabolic side effects of antipsychotic medication. 
disturbed bodily experiences in people with schizophrenia comprise a broad variety of bodily phenomena. For example, perceptions of morphological changes of the body, perceiving the body as strange, alien or not existent, as if falling apart or going bodily into pieces, having abnormal sensory sensations or experiencing interference, blocking or the, um, the automation of movement, abnormal thoughts and attitudes toward the body and disturbed bodily experiences together constitute body image disturbances in schizophrenia. In addition, psychological distress and anxiety related to the illness may place further strain on bodily function and well-being. Recently, a large study involving over 93,000 people with schizophrenia found that 35% and 21% are affected by arthritic pain and chronic low back pain, respectively. A systematic review investigating physiotherapy-led interventions in patients with schizophrenia demonstrated that aerobic and strength training, yoga therapy, and progressive muscle relaxation offered by physiotherapists improved the mental and physical health of patients with schizophrenia, while there are also some indications for the use of body awareness techniques. There is emerging evidence for physiotherapy in several areas and these will briefly be explored. Basic body awareness therapy, BIBAT, was originally developed as a physiotherapeutic intervention for people with chronic schizophrenia and the premature research findings indicated improvements in movement function, body image and anxiety. Recent qualitative research reported improvements in body balance and postural control, increased self-esteem, and unimproved ability to think in people with schizophrenia following physiotherapy based on basic body awareness exercises. However, rigorous research is needed before BIBAD can be considered effective in multidisciplinary treatment for people with schizophrenia. In order to increase adherence to the, to, to the physiotherapy program, physiotherapists should support patients' autonomy by offering clear choices, supporting the patient's initiatives, avoiding the use of external rewards, offering re relevant information related to the goals of the physiotherapy program and by using autonomy supportive language. For example, could and choose rather than should and have to. Feelings of competence are also attained with patients with a, a schizophrenia experience success while participating. The program needs to be tailored to the capabilities of the patient and sufficient instructions, practice and positive feedback are needed. Also, relatedness with the physiotherapist and at a later stage with other peers is important. Physiotherapists should therefore show enthusiasm and interest in their patients. When patients feel comfortable enough to participate Offering group sessions could increase the feeling of relatedness and decrease the feeling of being isolated. Five, 
patients with fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. Fibromyalgia is characterized by fluctuating chronic pain in all quadrants of the body, muscular tenderness, sleeping disorders, and daytime tiredness. Chronic fatigue syndrome, CFS, is a condition characterized by serious mental and physical fatigue combined with at least four of the seven following minor symptoms. Sore throat, new headache, tender lymph nodes, muscle pain, multiple joint pain, and refreshing sleep, and post-exertional malaise that last more than 24 hours. Depression and anxiety are common among both individuals with fibromyalgia or CFS. Moreover, a wide range of other symptoms referring to effort and stress intolerance can be associated with these conditions. The etiology and pathogenesis are not fully understood, but cumulating evidence suggests that central sensitization, hyper-responsiveness of the central nervous system. Research suggests that individuals, individuals with this pathology often suffer from tendency to be overactive in their daily activities to a degree that exacerbates symptoms. However, chronic pain and fatigue combined with activity-induced muscular pain and malaise easily lead to inactivity and fear avoidance behavior and may thus cause serious physical deconditioning including muscle wasting and decreased cardiovascular and lung function. Therefore, physiotherapy of individuals with CFS should be built on three equally important pillars, namely education, pacing, and physical exercises. Chronic pain is a highly prevalent and disabling condition with major impact on individuals, their significant others, and society. Prevalence rates for chronic pain uh, Prevalence rates for chronic pain range from 10 to 30 percent, and major depressive disorder is the most frequent psychiatric disorder in patients with chronic pain, with a 12-month prevalence ranging from 18 percent in population-based settings up to 85 percent in specialized pain clinics. Since patients who suffer from both chronic pain and depression are particularly difficult to treat, more effective interventions for this population are needed. Uh -huh.